What we're going to be looking at here are contingencies and we're going to be looking at both gain contingencies and loss contingencies and we're going to have this example here on 10 120 x one Corporation A was identified as a potentially responsible party here by the EPA that's the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States government and it's probable that Corporation A will be responsible for damages or environmental damages here and they're reasonably estimated here at three million dollars. Now uh, Corporation A also has an insurance policy here for four and a half million dollars and it has a deductible here of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and it's highly probable that they'll be able to recover this three million dollars worth of damages here uh, through their insurance policy so uh, the question is how should Corp A report this on its financial statements here for 1231 20x1 so the end of the year here for 20x1 how do they report here these uh, damages uh, that occurred here on 10 1 and also any gain through their insurance here so what we want to do is just set up a timeline here so what we have is our financial statement date here for the uh, year here 20 x1 and that's at 12 31 20 x1 and what we have to report here is those gain or loss contingencies here but the financial statement isn't going to be issued here until 2 5 20 x2 here uh, following month here in the following year here 20 x1 is for the uh, what the financial statements are going to represent here but and 20 x2 this is when they're going to be issued here and this is where we're going to have to look at a reporting here uh, for recording any gain or loss here on these contingencies here so uh, what we have two things to deal with here is this loss contingency and also this gain contingency here so our loss well we know that uh, it was reported here on 10 1 20 x 1 here and it was highly probable that there would be damages estimated here at three million dollars and again this is our potential responsibility here for this EPA damages here on 10 1 now for our gain here well that would be the insurance settlement here and this let's say they would have received four million dollars here and this is and that would be here on 3 1 20 x 2 here so and this would be the settlement date here for the insurance so they didn't uh, realize any insurance or any gain here or receive any money actually receive any money here until uh, at after the year end here of this um, of the um, financial for the year here at 20 x 1 settlement was here for 20 x 2 here uh, March 1st here and then again our reporting here uh, for these financial statements didn't happen until uh, February 5th here of 20x2. So first let's look at how we the answer here for our loss contingency here. Now because the damage occurred before the date here of our financial statements and because an unfavorable outcome is probable and it's reasonably estimated uh, report here uh, estimate the damages here the amount of damages you would report an accrued loss and liability here on 1231 20x1 of the financial statements and you do that here simply by setting up this liability account here for these EP uh, this environmental damage on your balance sheet credit it for three million dollars and then you would recognize here a loss on these damages on your income statement debit that here for three million dollars so uh, the, the um, probable damages here for the loss was easy enough to handle and that we actually made a recording here on our financial statements now for the gain contingency here that's a different story here the potential for the insurance recovery is a gain contingency here in this case and it is not recorded until uh, received now you what you would do is just disclose it here in the financial statement notes only when it's highly pro a high probability exists for realizing any uh, uh, any uh, gain or any money in this case on that on that insurance settlement here due to the damages that were realized so let's just go back up here and look at our timeline once again here so uh, what to report here as a contingency on our financial statements here 1231 20x1 well again we reported that liability here for the damages and also on our balance sheet here and also recognize a loss on our income statement and that's really an accrued uh, liability and loss here and that's only because it was highly probable that the damages here and we uh, we're going to be have to be paid here and we had a pretty solid estimate here of the amount of damages so in this case so we would report this uh, law or this liability and this loss contingency here on the on the financial statements here 1231 
20x1. But for our insurance settlement here, well, we had, again, a very high probability that we were going to get um, be able to recover on it, but we actually didn't make the recovery here until well after the um, well after the reporting and recording date here uh, of 2520x2 for the financial statement, and again after what would be reported here as a contingency on uh, for the financial statements 123120x1. Well, in either case here, it was after our financial statement date, but. What we have to do is, and uh, for reporting and recording, we, since the, this insurance settlement was it was highly likely we were going to receive some amount here from our insurance uh, carrier due to this uh, these damages that we suffered here. Then on our financial statements here at 1231, in when we record them here on 2520x2, uh, we would so note this possibility, uh, this gain contingency here, only in notes that are financial statements. So even though it was highly probable we are going to receive it, and it has to be highly probable that we're going to receive any, uh, any uh, insurance settlement here as a gain here, and then you would only report it in notes to your financial statements here. All right, so let's go and let's just review what we our gain and loss contingencies here. And, Okay, for our loss contingencies here, A, two conditions must exist before a loss contingency is recorded. Number one here, information available prior to the issuance of the financial statements indicates that it is probable that a liability has been incurred at the date here of the financial statements. And number two here, the amount of the loss can be reasonably estimated here. And B, if the amount of a loss is uncertain, the following disclosure in the notes is required. Notes of the financial statements. Number one, the nature of the contingency here. And two, an estimate of the possible loss or range of loss or a statement that an estimate cannot be made here. And for our gain contingencies here. First off, uh, those would be any claims or rights to receive assets here or have a liability reduced. Either assets received or a liability reduced. Now typical gain contingencies are, we'll just go through them here, one, possible receipts of monies for gifts, donations, bonuses, and so forth. Two, possible refunds from the government in tax disputes. Three, pending court cases with probable favorable outcomes here and for tax loss carry forwards. Now, this is what we talked about here for these gain contingencies. It's really a conservative approach here. Even though it may be highly probable that you're going to receive any gain here, like in our example from the insurance company, but in that case, you wouldn't uh, actually record anything in your on your financial statements, even though it's highly, except to note it in your financial statements that you have this gain contingency. So uh, you would disclose here gain contingencies in the financial statement notes only when it's highly pro a high probability exists for realize, realizing any of these gains. That is the gain contingency will become reality by either receiving some asset or having some liability reduced. So there you actually have to receive it uh, before you can actually record any gain here. And even the, you can only and if it's you wouldn't note it in your financial statements if it didn't have a high pro, you didn't have a high probability of receiving it then you would just leave it out here and further on here if one is dealing with an asset which has a carrying value or a book value an amount received in excess would be like the gain realized here so if the um, you, any amount in excess of your book value or carrying value would be like a, a gain realized when it actually happens. Now, at the time some value is actually received, the gain would be recorded here in a financial statement. So uh, it wouldn't be recorded on any financial statements until you actually receive it, and only then would you record it. Other than uh, if it has, you have a high probability of receiving it, then you would just put it down here in a note to your financial statement. So this covers uh, just the basics here for loss contingencies and gain contingencies. So we realize here that the gain contingency is more uh, conservative approach here where you wouldn't you don't record any gains until you actually receive it. Receive them then you would go in and uh, record any gains here. But and you wouldn't report them or in your notes to the financial statements until it's a high probability that you're actually going to receive any of these gains.